Hello everyone, tonight on the program, Ghana expected to benefit from a $170 billion World Bank fund aimed at helping member countries address multiple overlapping crises in the economies. In a crisis like this, this one, we will be allocating more money to social protection programs. That means these targeted uh, subsidies uh, for the poorest. Also coming up, Ghanaian banana exporters lament negative impact of Russia-Ukraine war on their businesses as they begin to incur losses. The situation is that uh, the main European market is quite uh, controlled and so you just cannot deliver anything that you want. However, this is our traditional market, but because these fruits cannot go through these countries, normally through the port of Odessa because of the war, attempts are being made to to down some of these foods in the traditional markets of the mainland Europe. Mm. And with a few more days to go for implementation of the electronic transaction levy, we find out how prepared digital payment firms are. You foresee that in the short term, as soon as it comes into force, um, maybe a month, there will, I mean, businesses will be impacted. Businesses such as um, the fintechs, Okay, and then the payment service providers will be impacted. This will impact even the dedicated money issuers. We'll have more of that coming up. Uh, do stay with us. My name is Daryl Kwao. Details in a bit. First up tonight, Ghana is expected to benefit from a $170 billion World Bank fund aimed at helping member countries address multiple overlapping crises in the economies. An initial $50 billion will be ready by July this year. The World Bank says it would help member countries manage rising inflation, energy and food supply shortages, which have been fueled by Russia-Ukraine war and lingering COVID-19 shocks. David Malpass is World Bank president and he has been speaking from Washington, D.C. So whether it's Nigeria or, the, or, or Ghana, the countries that we've mentioned today, the keystone is uh, to, to have plans and programs for the country that benefit the people and allow the, the poverty to be alleviated and the, the uh, median income to go up. What is it that will cause more investment in the country that's, uh, that's productive? Um, and we look for those programs and then try to rapidly expand the the programs in those countries that are making uh, making progress toward beneficial results. Um, it, it oftentimes, uh, in a crisis like this, this one, we will be allocating more money to social protection programs. That means these targeted uh, subsidies uh, for the poorest uh, so that they can have a path through the crisis uh, and then uh, and then have uh, uh, new businesses that start, new jobs that start on the other side of the crisis. Now, the country's tax revenue in relation to the size of the economy is expected to grow this year by nearly 2% to 16.5%. That's according to the International Monetary Fund's latest fiscal monetary report. However, despite the drastic cut in government expenditure for this year, spending in relation to the total value of the economy will fall marginally. Charles Nixon-Yabwa has been going through the data. The International Monetary Fund April 2022 Fiscal Monitor is actually forecasting that Ghana's tax-to-GDP ratio will nearly increase by 2% to 16.5%, and that comes as a good news for the country. This means that the various revenue measures by the Finance Ministry is going to yield positive results. On the other hand, going forward into the future, we expect the managers of the economy to do more to be able to 
increase the tax to GDP ratio to the African average of about 20%. We also expect them to reduce spending. And if they are able to do that, we'll be good to go in terms of helping to trim our debt to our debt. Because the rising debt is a concern for the country. If the debt keeps rising, it will be very difficult for us to have fiscal space in order to invest in very critical projects that will yield uh, results i.e. job creation and infrastructure development. So on a whole, this is what the International Monetary Fund is saying with regard to the assessment by its fiscal monitor. And um, the good news is that Ghana's tax to GDP ratio would somehow expand to some extent, but uh, the tax to, the expenditure to tax ratio is what is of a concern and that will not fall as expected and will keep the fiscal deficit to GDP ratio at 9.8%. Joint Business Editor Charles Nixingabwa there. Now the Bank of Ghana says it is ready to go after companies and individuals pricing goods and services in dollars without permit. This comes after the central bank cautioned businesses to desist from such acts. According to Head of Financial Stability at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Joseph France, the bank will start sanctioning offenders in the coming days. There is more in this report. Speaking at a public lecture under the theme Warden of Fraudulent Investment Schemes in Ghana at the University of Ghana, Dr. Joseph France disclosed that the central bank will partner other security agencies to undertake special operations in the country to stop the canker. Dr. France stated that the exercise will be undertaken unannounced to enable the security agencies arrest the perpetrators in the act. You and I who patronize these products, the Bank of Ghana cannot be everywhere. So uh, you get an institution pricing in dollars that is not authorized to price in dollars. All you need to do is to send information to us. And we have a lot more institutions um, sending. Yes, um, we go after, we go after um, institutions that are not supposed to uh, price in dollars who price in dollars. We go after them. We will not, we will not, we will not advertise when we are going after um, corporates, but we go after institutions. Of course, this is a continuum. I mean, you cannot um, um, go after them. And frosters keep coming. We started chasing after frosters and thieves, but they still come. So we'll do our bit to um, um, sensitize you on that and then also go after those, the corporates. There can be recalcitrant ones, but we'll still go after them to deter. And we work with the uh, security agencies to do that. Head of Policy Research and Information Technology at the Security and Exchange Commission, Emmanuel Ashon Katai, assured that the commission will work with other relevant stakeholders in the financial sector to prevent the public from being duped in fraudulent investment scheme that promise outrageous returns. He added that the commission will achieve the feat by increasing its presence across the regions to boost confidence in its activities. Yes, it's a, it's a resource constraint, uh, but we do have plans to extend our presence to the regions you know we are we are we are now considering doing that but at the same time we are using the mass media which reaches out to the length and breadth of the country so our presence presence is still felt out there by using the mass media and also the social media of late we have, we have intensified our activities on social media so uh, people do hear of sec but we are still taking steps to fiscally be present in the regions, maybe in the northern sector and the southern sector. The public lecture was part of the Financial Literacy Month organized by the University of Ghana Business School. In other news, banana exporters are lamenting the negative impact of the Russia-Ukraine war on their businesses. According to the exporters, the war has compelled suppliers from Latin America who traded in Eastern Europe to divert their supplies to Western Europe, where Ghanaian exporters control portions of the market. Speaking earlier on the marketplace, Secretary of the Banana Exporters Association of Ghana, George Poe, said the situation is causing food exporters from Ghana to run at a loss. These European countries have supplied the Russia, Belarus and, U and Ukraine with bananas. They export around 1.8 to 2 million tons a year. Now, the situation is that uh, the main European market is quite uh, uh, controlled, and so you just cannot deliver anything that you want. However, this is our traditional market, but because these fruits cannot go through these countries, normally through the port of Odessa because of the war, 
attempts are being made to, to down some of these fruits in, in the traditional markets of uh, mainland Europe. Mm. And uh, in a situation where we already are having challenges with increased input costs from fertilizer to all other inputs, if we have also at the same time a situation where our prices are significantly undermined because of this dumping, this would be a major crisis for the industry. And what's going to be the trickle-down effect on the farm gates to the market centers in Ghana? You know, this is a perishable product. You know, we can't store it. So anything that we do as pots will mean that we cannot sell them. So what we mean is that uh, it will uh, affect production as pots volumes will be considerably reduced and, uh, you know, sustaining the plantations will become a major problem. Let's talk about alternatives. What kind of alternative you know, measures are you now putting in place to ensure that you're cushioning yourself against this threat? So what is happening is that because we have various agreements with the European Union, uh, typically the European Partnership Agreement, where there are safeguard clauses you know, against such things, uh, we have drawn the attention to uh, the European authorities uh, when uh, Strasbourg two weeks ago uh, to uh, the European Parliament to draw attention to these issues. Mm. So we are hoping that uh, the safeguard measures will be kicked in to ensure that we are protected. Alternatively, the industry is making efforts to expand within Africa, you know, as an alternative source of markets and uh, efforts have been done. Uh, my company, Golden Exotics, exports already around 20% within West Africa in the Sahelian region mostly, mostly yes. Senegal, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali and, and Niger and also Benin in there. Now, Deputy Director in Charge of Research, Statistics and Information Management Directorate at the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Enoch Bwedu Amo says, his outfit is working on finding alternative livelihood projects for fisher folk uh, during the enforcement of temporary ban on fishing. According to him, the move will sustain the fishermen and provide additional income. Speaking on Marketplace, Inogbuedu noted that it is imperative for people within the fishing industry find alternatives of surviving. We understand that uh, closing the sea for one month, but ideally uh, the sea is closed. Look at how they fish. The close season is between uh, 14 days to 16 days because of the, the appearance of the moon. We see that fishing is more tied to their economy, but we've also realized that the catches are going down. and. Uh, as part as, as we put in measures to stop illegalities, if we allow the sea to rest for a while, then, then we will, in the medium to long term, we will recover the stocks that they are, are, are going down. They, the fishermen themselves, will attest to the fact that for some time now, when they go to sea, they catch a little and, and they catch a lot of rubbish. So these are measures that we, we are hoping to, that it will, um, will calm down and help recover the stocks. Uh, we will also provide some uh, modicum of support in this closing, uh, close season. As last year, we did some 15,000 bags of uh, rice and oil. But uh, see, these are not enough. That's why we tried to come up with an announcement earlier so that the fishermen themselves can provide themselves, prepare adequately to so that they can support themselves within the group. Going forward, in the, in the next years coming, we will continue to dialogue with the fishermen on what alternative livelihood projects can be done for them so that they, when they are not fishing, they can be doing something else. I think that would be a long-term thing that the ministry is looking to engage the fishermen on so that uh, fishing, though it's a hobby and it's a, a cultural thing, will be used as an alternative uh, livelihood, not the main livelihood, so that when we ask people to stop, it will not impact much on their, uh, their livelihood. The fishery subsector recorded stellar performance in 2021, recording a 13.4% growth after years of zero to negative growth. The government's decision made this known, stating this performance triggered an overall growth in the agri sector by 8.4%. Reacting to this development, Nogbuedu said the ministry has put in place measures to check illegal fishing activities, a move they believe will sustain the growth of the sector. Ooh, so uh, we will keep on going it. Uh, no zero tolerance towards illegal activities on the sea. We'll continue this year. We've already announced that the closing for the uh, artisanal or the semi the industrial uh, canoes and the artisanal semi industrial vessels will come on from 1st July to 31st July. Whereas the industrial one, the trolleys, will start from 1st July to 31st August. 
and then we are other measures that we are introducing. In these measures, we are ensuring that nobody is going back to illegal activities. With, we've encouraged them, uh, the Navy and the Marine Police to go ahead. And we're also speaking with the industrial activities. Uh, then there's a ministry directive on the industrial sectors to change the ideas that they are using so that they can get gear that is uh, friendly to the uh, uh, resource harvest so that we can ensure that there's uh, sustainability in the sector. Meanwhile, some facial folk in a conversation with Joy Business has supposed the directive by the ministry describing the timelines as unfavorable. All right, you're watching uh, Business Live. Still to come, with a few more days to go for implementation of the electronic transaction levy, we find out how prepared digital payment firms are. Foresee that in the short term, as soon as it comes into force, um, maybe a month, there will, I mean, businesses will be impacted. Businesses such as um, the fintechs, okay, and then the payment service providers will be impacted. This will impact even the To Business Live, Country Manager of Cellulant Ghana, Eric Kote, says digital payment firms and fintechs are poised for the implementation of the electronic transaction levy. The 1.5% tax on some electronic transactions, including mobile money transfers, takes effect from the 1st of May. Mr. Kote, however, anticipates the payments industry to be impacted at the beginning stages of implementation as customers adjust to new charges. We will be impacted one way or the other. Now, you know, the, the Ghana Revenue Authorities have made the payment uh, service providers like Cellulant as a collecting agent. Now, let's understand that this um, particular levy, okay, will be levied on the, the consumer. And the consumers are our, they are our customers. So if, the, if it impacts on them negatively, yes, it will definitely impact on us. But the full impact of this, um, I mean, I'll be able to, to really give an assessment of it when it comes into being, okay? So today we know that um, the tentative date given is um, in April, uh, sorry, in May. 
So once 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 it comes into being, then we'll look at it. However, I mean, what what I know is um, just like what the what has been communicated to us by the government in terms of some some services that are exempted, others that are not. But um, it will affect the space because today, even though there is there is um, if you look at the payment space, the digital payment space, close to eighty or eighty five percent. Is actually Momo or electronic payment, right? Electronic payment, Momo cards. I mean, will be will, it will affect us. However, the impact, as I said, from today, yes, people will have to look at the business. Okay, are there are people going to join long queues? Okay, those are, those will come to play, but we need to wait and then um, experience it before we will look at it. But all right, now Newmont Ghana has launched an alternative livelihood training program for 24 selected youth uh, from the catchment communities of the mining company in the Ahafo region. They will learn welding and fabrication for 12 weeks. And according to Adiki AITV, the vice president of Newmont Ghana Gold Mines for Sustainability and External Relations, the pilot program is aimed at providing the youth with a decent and viable alternative to legal mining. She was speaking at the launch of the program at Kenya Se in the Sutufi North District. Pesho Semavo has more. A training program launched at Kenya Se in the Sutufi North District of the Hafu region involves 24 youths, including four females along the Galamse value chain. They were selected from communities in the Hafu North and South concessions, including Adroba, Frisipa, Tetre, Susuanso, Omahinso, Jedu, Intotroso, and Kenya Se 1 and 2. The three months welding and fabrication training at CPI in Tema for $300,000 will see the Paniers supported with a monthly allowance and industrial training for three months. The pilot program is to provide the trainees with a meaningful, decent, and viable alternative to Galamse. Adikia ITV is the vice president of Newmont Ghana Gold Mines in charge of sustainability and external relations. We did do an ASM or artisanal small scale mining baseline survey to understand those who are involved in illegal mining. And what we did that a lot of the people had indicated that they were, they were not interested in doing illegal mining, but because they didn't have the work opportunity, by default they had to go there. So we worked with consultants and we spoke with the community and decided to do this pilot employment opportunity. So they are going to go through training in welding and fabrication. And we hope that through that, they will also be able to get an um, opportunity to work with companies who do work in welding and fabrication. We are also going to talk to our contractors to see those who are able to take them on. And if that doesn't work, then the last piece that we'll be looking at is working with the, the local government officials to have um, think about set up an industrial park, equip them so that they can create their own work where they can also so look for other people to come in and support them. As some of them mentioned, when they can't get a job, then they also have to eat. Then they're going to think about going back. Oh, bro, what's it? I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. original minister, Jack Boache, thanked Newmont for the initiative to combat the Galamse menace and advised the candidates to make the most out of the lifetime opportunity offered to equip them with employable skills that would help them to contribute to the development of the country. Now, or maybe a you want a deeper skillfully look of your development or man of course. I do my way to Galam Sina. When he said, Faso there was no SOPA. Right, Ajiman, a beneficiary, also appreciated the mining company for the support to move them away from the high risk Galam activities. He said if Newmont carries out its plans for them after the training, their lives would certainly improve. With a positive impact on society. The ambassador of Jumbo says today, "I'm just saying, I'm very worried. I'm busy in your show." Precious Semevo, Joy Business, Kenya. All right, time now for Fund It. Here is tonight's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fund It with me, Dr. Thelma Frempong of the Desert Youth Services and Consultancy. Today, we are talking about building a brand or a great presence online. Today, business is done online. Thanks to COVID and all that it came with, there's a lot going on in the virtual space and you cannot be left out in your business. Remember that 
funders can go behind you to check how well your brand is doing online and how competitive you are online and so it is very prudent that you build a strong brand online where people can easily assess whatever you are coming up with it's equally a good way to get funders attention because as I said earlier they can go online to check whatever you are doing online over there and so take advantage of the virtual space take advantage of social media and all the avenues available to us and that is a good way of getting funders to come into whatever you are doing too and then you can equally put everything you have online for easy access so that customers can equally get there and see what you have to offer thank you for your time thank you labadi beach hotel for hosting us and see you in the next session All right, and that's our program for tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. You can read more about our top story, World Bank announcing a $170 billion fund to address multiple overlapping crises facing our global economies, plus uh, 3.5 million Ghanaians to be connected to the internet by the end of 2023. And that's it for Business Life. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time tomorrow.